Hey guys, today we're going to cover the seven essential steps you need to take if you want to start your PT business. But before we start, why should you listen to me? Let me show you. This is Flourish Fitness, a women's gym that I just opened. I've been a trainer for eight years and finally bit the bullet and opened my own women's facility. So I know firsthand what it takes to start from nothing and slowly build your way up to a successful personal training business. So let me save you eight years of guesswork and let's just get down to what I wish I knew from the beginning. Step one, assess your passion for personal training. Why is it that you want to go into this career? Many people, especially avid gym goers, think that they want to be a trainer because they just like being in the gym. This could not be further from the truth, and if that is your reason for wanting to be a PT, just don't do it. My why was because I had a 65 pound weight loss that totally transformed my life, and I knew I wanted to help other women feel that same kind of change and that same confidence boost. Personal training is one of the highest turnover industries and if your personal why is not clear, you will not last. Step two, gain credentials and get certified. Now you've assessed your why, the next step is getting your schooling. So whether that be online or an in-person personal training course, you must get certified in order to get the proper knowledge to help your clients effectively. Many people assume that you need to have a full kinesiology degree from a university to actually become a certified trainer. That is not the case. There are many online or in-person certifications that are much shorter time frame and a much smaller budget. For example, CanFit Pro, ACE, ISA, NASM. There are tons of different certifications out there and I will post a entire resource of every certification listed and what the pros and cons are for each one. And I will cover this topic in depth in another video. So although having a degree is one path that you can take for this, it is not the only path. Step three, determine your workspace. There's so many different ways that you can pursue training, be it from a commercial gym, from your own home, going to clients' homes and doing mobile training. There are so many different paths and workspaces that you can have as a trainer and it's important to consider the pros and cons of each one and see which one benefits you and your clients the most. So my personal story, I worked at big box gyms for the first four years of my career and then when we finally bought our home, I created a home gym in my garage and I invested money into finishing the garage and buying machines secondhand and getting my own space. And I've done that for the past four years of my career and now finally moving into my own commercial space. So that's been my path, but there's no right or wrong. You can work your entire life in a commercial gym and love it and that's the perfect thing for you. And conversely, you can work your entire career from your apartment gym and make that work really well. There are many pros and cons for either path that you choose. The reason that I chose to step away from big box gyms is I just felt I wasn't getting compensated enough for the amount of emotional investment and work that I was putting in. So I decided to become my own boss. Uh, I will make a full other in-depth video about all the details of either path. Um, but yeah, that is my reason why. Step four, you're going to want to identify your ideal client niche. Specializing in a specific niche, for example, women, elderly, pre and post pregnancy, powerlifting, athletes, this can really set you apart. Identify what your passions are and what aligns with your expertise. Step five, acquire your first client. This is a huge milestone when you're just starting your business and it's something to be celebrated. Now, that's why you wanna pick your niche prior to doing this so that you know exactly who to target. You're gonna be leveraging your friends, your family, your social network to get the word out that you are now accepting clients within that specific niche. I highly recommend offering a free session or two to really showcase your skills and start building up your client base. If you are working for a big box gym, acquiring your first client may be very easy. Typically, if you're an employee, the gym has a lead generation system through free consults where they will just give you clients and all you need to do is sign them up. 
This is a great way to start off your PT business because it literally just gives you clients and you don't have to think much about marketing yourself. Now, if you're going to start a home-based business, you're gonna have to do a lot more work to build up your audience, get the word out that this is something that you're now offering, and you're gonna want to focus a lot more on marketing yourself. When I began my career, I worked for a local box gym called Good Life Fitness and they do exactly that. They just give you the consult, they let you sell them, and then it's up to you to deliver the training program and the sessions. And through doing that, over a year and a half of me working there, I became a lot better at selling the consult and actually closing the deal. And I also had a lot more experience actually delivering results to clients. So I felt more confident in my skill level and this enabled me to sell a lot more easily. Then when I moved into having my own business, I already had a huge network of prior clients who could offer me referrals, et cetera. I was also growing my social media. These are all things that eventually helped me become successful as my own boss. So whether you are getting the lead from your employer or you are acquiring your own leads, the important step is just starting and getting that first person in. Step six, marketing on a budget. You may not have a huge budget to hire an SEO expert or do a bunch of ads right off the bat. So the best thing you can do is just get to work and do your own marketing. You've now identified your niche. So what you can do is speak to that ideal client and start creating content that that person may want to see and that would attract them to you. Using social media, letting your personality shine through your content will enable a potential client to know who you are as a coach. And you really don't need very much as long as you have an Instagram or TikTok page and some kind of form linked in your bio as a client intake form or a coaching application. This is all you need to start. And as your business grows, you can then reinvest into higher levels of marketing. So if you're looking for a free form builder, Google Forms is a great one. I've also in the past used JotForm and I currently use Involve Me, which is paid. Step seven, managing finances and future planning. As a trainer, whether you're box gym employed or self-employed, you probably will not get any type of benefits. So you need to be smart with your budget and make sure that you're tracking your expenses as well as your income and making sure that things are balancing out and that you're profiting and that you are setting money aside for things like medical bills, dental, massage, therapy, all the things that you may get from a different employer you probably won't get as a personal trainer. So it's just gonna take a little bit more of that back end planning on your end. Aside from benefits, you also want to have a managed expectation of what your income is going to look like when you're first starting. When I started at a big box gym, the gym was charging 85 to 95 per session to the client, but I was only making $21, I believe, of that. So of course the gym is going to take a huge cut, but what you're getting in exchange for that is a place to work and leads getting fed to you. So. That's one thing. When I started going branching off on my own, I trained a lot of clients for free just to, again, build up my testimonials and build trust. Then I began by charging only $30 per session, which is a crazy amazing deal. I just think about that now. I'm like, wow. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I made my price very affordable so I could get a lot of testimonials as I built up my own credentials by getting further certification and furthering my experience, I then was able to raise my price. Now I charge 95 per session and I get to keep 100% of that. So you can make a lot of money training, but it does take time to build up. So if you're just starting and you're like, yeah, I wanna charge 95 off the bat, clients may not be willing to pay that when you have no testimonials, no experience. How can they trust you with their money when you don't have anything to really show for it yet? That's something to keep in mind. So keep your expectations managed, but know that the, the earning potential is absolutely limitless. So those were the seven steps, but I wanna leave you with a bonus step, which is building a support network. When you are beginning a new career path, especially training, and especially if you're an entrepreneur or you're self-employed, the path can feel very, very lonely. Any of my entrepreneurs out there know and can relate to what I'm saying, but if you're new and you're getting into this, 
being self-employed is a lonely road and the best way to combat those entrepreneurial blues is to connect with other people who are doing the same thing as you or finding a mentor in someone who has done what you wish to do. This will help you grow and help you not feel so lonely on the journey. When I worked at a box gym, I loved that camaraderie that came with working alongside other trainers. And that's ultimately why I chose to open my own gym now is because I want to again feel that sense of friendship and community with other professionals working along the same goals that I am. When I was self-employed working at the rec centers, I felt so alone. I didn't have anyone to really like share my struggles or, you know, any questions I had about something that client was going through. I didn't have any mentor or other people really experiencing the same thing I was to kind of bounce ideas off of. And so that's something that I'm working on building back up now is creating a team of female trainers just like me who want to grow their business. And yeah, that's why I opened my own facility now. And that also leads me to my newest project is I am creating a course and a community of other trainers just like you, just like me eight years ago, who want to just grow and build together. And there is strength in numbers and that's why I'm creating this whole thing. So that's what you can expect in the coming months is this whole entire course, more videos just like this one, helping the newbie trainer become successful. My aim is to help you succeed. So all of these videos and resources are gonna be free on YouTube and my website. So keep an eye out because I'm so excited to share this all with you. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.